How do we keep moving forward? By focusing on what matters. It's why Cupra is making such an impact in Ireland. From the bold styling of the plug-in hybrid fermenter, to the agile handling of the sporty Leon range, and the all-electric Cupra-born e-boost function, delivering instant power at the touch of a button. So what would you like to do? Stick with what you know? Or embrace the irresistible momentum of Cupra? Search Cooper Official for our latest offers. The Hard Shoulder with Kieran Cuddy with Nissan on News Talk. Handwriting on its way to the grave. Apparently, it's been on its way to the grave for some time, according to some. But its demise has been hastened. It will soon be the preserve of a sophisticated few, according to a piece in today's uh, newspapers. Uh, with me to discuss Louise Cantillon, the Today FM presenter, and Liz Maguire, the letter collector and curator. You're both very, very welcome. Um, Liz, I know you would lament the loss of handwriting because you love it so much. You collect handwritten letters, isn't that right? I do. Thank you very much for having me on. I love this question. Um, is handwriting dying? I don't think it is, uh, but per, perhaps, uh, you know, it, it'll take a bit of persuading for me to think that it's, it's on its way out. But I think with, with a bit of spirit, we can get the handwritten letter back in, back in circulation. Why bother? Should we can send an email? <laughs> Oh, no, no, no. There's there's nothing like a handwritten letter through the door. And I think it kind of ranges on the question of accessibility to a point, because it's a bit elitist to say that the handwritten letter can only be pen on paper. So I do agree that there's an accessibility issue with typing and digital elements of the letter. But the issue at the heart of the handwriting concern is, you know, are we losing touch with one another? And I think that the letter is a great way to keep in touch. So the the letter, but the specifically the handwritten letter, if possible, like what, what is it about the individuality of handwriting that you find so attractive or appealing? Oh, I think there's there's over 600 letters that have been featured in my archive in the last uh, number of years. And I sound like a mad one when I say that I could recognize each stranger's handwriting because I spent so much time looking at them and learning and, and learning the stories that their letters tell. But their handwriting, there's actually a whole study of it called graphology that I think is particularly interesting. Um, and I, I had a graphologist look at some of the letters from the archive before. And the insights that we can learn from our handwriting are as much of a fingerprint as, you know, the fingerprints on our own hands. Uh, Louise Canton and I mentioned is with us as well. So Louise, as somebody who uh, converses and writes and speaks in two different languages, I mean, is, is there a value that you get in writing things down in a language rather than typing them out? 100%. Um, nice to meet you over the phone, Liz. I agree with so much of what you've said. And I think absolutely, like, writing, handwriting something matters so much, especially when it comes to talking about writing and learning. I think that even for me, having been a teacher and someone who was a student, and I think I still am a student of many languages, certainly Irish, I speak all the time, and I try to learn and improve all the time. And for me, comprehension, retention, I can do all of those things so much better if I'm hand writing notes, you know. Um, I think that, you know, technology is amazing, being able to, you know, predictive text, write things quickly, shorthand by email, all of the above are brilliant and have their place. But they can also, I think, in terms of learning and the education side of things, make us kind of lazy and complacent. Like, how many of us can spell the really long words on our phone anymore? We just type the start of whatever and let the predictive text, you know, come up with the rest of it. So I think um, definitely it will be something that we should all aim not to lose at all. And I would disagree entirely with the fact that it's a dying art. I think if anything, um, it's it's there and it's more important than ever. And I don't think it's something that will die. Like people have been expressing themselves through carvings since Neolithic times in this country. I don't think we're going to lose handwriting in this century. It's interesting because I was listening to your podcast, Louise, How to Gail, uh, yourself yep. and uh, Shiva and Darren. And it was Darren, one of your uh, co-presenters, who made an interesting point as well about finding herself having to write things in English kind of academically for the first time relatively recently that she's always kind of studied and taught and learned through Irish and and how much it helped her get a grasp and, and of of aspects of the language having to write things down for the first time 100% and I think you know that's the thing a spoken language is absolutely brilliant and it's one way of communicating but then when you write a language 
particularly Irish, we'll say, if we're going in the other direction, you know, you have the addition of a fada. A fada over a verb can change the entire meaning of a word sometimes. So you don't have that in English, you know, and it's like the structure of sentences. Um, obviously, Irish doesn't always exactly translate to English. So when you write at a very high academic level as Zirin would in Irish, you're, nothing can be directly translated. You couldn't take her writing and put it into Google Translate and it would come out, you know, in perfect English. It would come out as gobbledygook. So that's, you know, I don't think languages are transferable like that. So that is the importance of writing. Of course, you have to be able to write to suit the language you know, in all grammatical form. Uh, Liz, I, I wonder as well, like, I mean, for future historians, there'll be a premium placed on stuff that's written down, isn't it? Because, you know, there, there's a uniformity to emails and probably even allowing for each individual's own kind of use of language and syntax without even realising it. We, we probably all kind of conform as well, more than we realise um, typing things out, more so than handwriting. Absolutely. I think, by the way, Louise, I think you and I would have an excellent cup of coffee. <laughs> I think there's there's a lot to be uh, said about the, the handwritten letter as a, as a primary resource, right? So I have over 4,000 in the archive um, that I've collected. And the number one thing I hear from people is, you know, oh, I wish I still had, you know, my granny's letters or my dad's letters or, you know, there's, there's all, everyone has a letter story because there's such a tangible item of, of connectivity and, and of history. And you're dead on to say, you know, are we all just not sending too many emails and WhatsApps and your photos get deleted after 30 days? And, you know, what, what's the temporality of it? And, and I think that there really is a, an argument to be made to sit down and spend two minutes to write a birthday card to someone or, God forbid, 10, 15 minutes to write them a letter a few times a year just to have that touch point and that, that peace uh, that you can share between yourselves. And yes, there will be historians that will rely on the ever decreasing number of those um, as we as we go into the future. Well, I handwrite all of my notes for this show every day and I wish I could say it was to do with retention or individuality. It's because I'm here about 12 years and I still can't work out how to connect my laptop to the printer. And so if anybody in tech is listening, I mean, I'd love to, be, I'd love a bit of help. Um, uh, Liz McGuire, who is a, a curator, a letter co- collector, and um, it's Vintage Love Letter Archive is what she curates, is what I should have mentioned. And Louise Cantillon as well, a Today FM presenter. And How to Gale is uh, the name of Louise's new podcast. The first episode is up there. If you want to listen to it, uh, Louise and Liz Garmila Magov. 